Good day everyone. My name is Mukul Madhu and I will be your moderator for today's webinar. On behalf of Barrow, I'd like to welcome you all to another webinar from Barrow Insights. In today's webinar, we will have our presenters discuss how index-based cost models can help to price negotiations. So before we move ahead with the presentation, I have a few general instructions, as always. Please note that all attendees will be placed on mute. During the course of the presentation, if you would like to post questions, you will find a box on the right-hand side, indicated in red. I request you to type in your question and hit the send button. As the presentation progresses, we will note down any frequently asked questions and pose them to the presenter at the end of the session. Should you experience any connectivity issues, we request that you close your window, go back to the email, and try to reconnect using the same link. If you face any further problems, please do not hesitate to email rt at rt.ganesham at barrow-inc.com. You will also find this in the email shared with you earlier. Moving on, let me quickly introduce you to our presenters for today's webinar. Sreyan Shripati is an oil and gas expert at Vero. He specializes in the OCTG category, providing procurement intelligence for Fortune 500 companies. In his three years at Vero, Sreyan has built extensive knowledge and expertise in oil and gas categories such as fracturing fleet services, satellite field development services, and coil fueling, among others. He presented a paper on methane hydrates and its significance to Japan at the 10th Asian Gas Conference held in Osaka. Some topics he covered in his papers include situation of OCTG in the Middle East and impact of the guar gum shortage on the pharmaceutical industry. Mahesh Radhakrishnan works as a senior research analyst at Vero. He specializes in various aspects related to oil and gas, upstream as well as downstream, such as capital project, EPC and service providers, modular process kits, and pipeline O&M activities. Prior to joining Vero, he had four years of experience in EPCM, where he was involved in end-to-end -end activities ranging from design to project management. He has published an article in Offshore World magazine titled Transnational Pipeline Diplomacy. Apart from this, he has authored several articles and white papers as part of his research within Vero. So without further ado, let me pass it on to Mahesh. Thank you, Mukun. Oil and gas industry inherently faces a lot of challenges in terms of ENP activity. Despite these challenges and complexities, one thing that has remained constant for oil and gas operators is sourcing of consumables, like the oil country tubular goods, which are used throughout the life cycle of a well. Today, the world is so dynamic that category managers are facing a lot of pressure in sourcing the right kind of product at right time and at right price. In such a scenario, a robust and a dynamic tool for price analysis is invaluable to the category manager in making a fast and effective decision and also keep him well informed about the ever-changing commodity market. Now Shreyanshu, knowing all these facts, why don't you describe to our listeners how we plan to plan to help them today. Thank you for the brief background, Mahesh. Today's discussion will start with us giving a brief snapshot of the present scenario faced by category managers. We will see what category managers are doing today in order to make their procurement decisions. What are the questions a category manager has to answer? to make an effective decision and what tools and models does he use to answer these questions. We will also see how effective these tools are and how relevant the information is. Next, we introduce some new ideas to the picture. We add some depth to the current approach and try to create a more holistic approach to price tracking. We will go into details of how a new approach might work as we explain its various aspects. And we will end with an evaluation of how this new approach works. We will look at the results of our approach and compare it with the current models 
to see if this new system can deliver value to the category managers. With that said, let's get on with the story. The first part of the story is about the situation today. ENP spend is growing at a CAGR of 12%. For the next four years, operators drill more, drill deeper, as the return on investment on a well has never been higher. So what? Why are you telling me all this? Because Mahesh, when the operations and planning teams sit together to formulate the drilling plans of the year, they are thinking about these things. This is the stage where the conditions are set for the category managers to operate in. How much OCTG is needed? Where is it to be delivered? What should the budget be? And now the category manager gets to work. To deliver an effective decision, he has many questions to make. And the most important one is, what is the best price he can buy his OCTG for? But price is not fixed. It's fluid. It changes from time to time. It varies from region to region. Grades of OCTG for one application vary in price from another. And all this is just complicating matters. It just adds more questions. Is there a low cost sourcing location? Can I manage my buying cycle better to get a cost advantage? The questions keep getting more complicated, but a robust and accurate price forecast can make a solid anchor to start getting these answers. Well then Shreyanshu, does the category manager have a price forecast? Yes Mahesh, the sourcing managers today have a forecast based on the raw materials for OCTG. What more can you tell me about it? Well Mahesh, as I was telling you, it's a forecast based on raw materials going into the production of OCTG. Raw materials constitute more than half the operating expenses of manufacturing OCTG and a majority of this cost is steel. But the other factors, ferrochrome and molybdeno, they are not usually included. But as we can see, the price of ferrochrome is sometimes 40 times more than steel and even a single person change has a significant impact on price. Such things are not always taken into account. However, it is a simple and popular tool that, takes, uh, that tracks OCTG prices by relating the price changes in raw material to OCTG. And a large, since the large share of raw material makes up the cost, it is a valid estimate. But Shreyanshu, I can see some shortcomings in this model. You said raw material accounts for only 50 to 60 percent of overall operating cost of OCTG. But what about the other half of the cost? Aren't these factors relevant? I know for the fact that labor rates vary sharply from region to region. Don't you think this impacts the cost? Indian labor rate is far cheaper than the labor rate in North America and Europe. Also, drilling operations move towards more remote locations. The logistic cost would increase, which would directly impact OCTG pricing. Continuing from the above point, if I have to source from low cost country, then raw material index might not be the most appropriate one as it does not consider regional outlook. And also, the raw material index does not track all grades of OCT. This lack of visibility in the price focusing system adds to the sourcing manager problem. Lastly, in my opinion, if a price index only considers raw material prices for indexing, then it isolates itself from all the other market conditions which sometimes have significant impact on price focus. For example, OCTG pricing have steadily been dropping in spite of relatively high feedstock price because of higher oversupply in the market. Shouldn't such factors be considered while focusing the price? Well then Mahesh, if you were a sourcing manager for OCTG, what elements do you think are important in a forecasting model. If I were a category manager, 
I would be more interested in taking a quick and effective decision which would help reduce my overall sourcing time. I would also want to know for every 1% increase in factors like raw material, labor, energy, logistics, what is the percentage increase in the OCTG price? And lastly, let's not forget, as a sourcing manager, I would like to have an OCTG pricing with respect to their grade and specific to region. And therefore, I would like to have a model which is customizable. Well, Mahesh, why don't you let me sum this up for our listeners? While raw material forecasts provide some good insights, they are one dimensional and could be more effective. The forecast should be more dynamic and be able to reflect that a category manager tracks and buys more than one gate of OCTG. It should be flexible to account for regional variations in price. It should also be sensitive to the hidden and indirect costs which sometimes drive price. And lastly, it should keep an eye on how supply and demand are shaping price. So Mahesh, let me introduce you to a new approach in forecasting that will answer most of your needs. A more detailed and effective method to provide forecasts which can offer value at various levels. It allows for more accuracy regardless of the grade and application of the OCTG you are buying. And it is more sensitive to the indirect factors affecting price, market conditions in supply and demand, and regional variations can also be accommodated. I would like to present the index-based cost model. Of course, Paddy, I am really interested in this index-based model and would like to know more about it. As you wish, Mahesh. Let's take a quick high-level look at how this works. We have already established that just tracking raw materials is not enough. Index-based cost model, as the name suggests, uses a detailed cost model as a starting point to give an accurate forecast. In addition to raw materials, other factors such as energy, labor, logistics, utilization, are considered to create an accurate picture of the manufacturing costs. Each of these factors is indexed, given a weightage and the final results are collated to give an index which tracks manufacturing costs. To balance the supply side of the equation, we look, we look at some demand side factors such as ENP spend, reactivity, crude oil pricing and horizontal drilling. Again, indexed and weighted and combined to give a demand side picture as these factors drive the overall growth of the industry. Both these indexes balanced and combined give a realistic index that is more accurate and robust. Don't take my word for it. Let me explain in a bit more detail and you can see for yourself. So Mahesh, we have talked a lot about raw materials before, but I think a new approach to calculating this cost element is in order. Did you know a 0.5% increase in molybdenum concentration for high chromium alloy tubing increases the cost by $150 over a ton of OCTG? Similarly, a 1% change in chromium adds $70 to a ton. I believe if we accurately tracked and accounted for compositions, the cost can be accurately forecasted too. As an added bonus, it makes the forecast more flexible as a forecast can be created for the exact grade of OCTG that is to be bought. Add in the fact that local raw material prices can be considered, a regional, you have a regional flavor and you have a val very valuable tool. I think that's an improvement. Don't you think so? Yes, I agree. But you still haven't accounted for the other half of the cost. Good cash, Mahesh, and I'm getting there. This other 50% of the cost is not always visible to the buyer. Individually, these factors may be as small as 2 to 5% which is the case of energy, 
but they do have an impact. An example is Japan, where the shift from cheap nuclear energy to costly imported LNG will have an effect on the final OCTG cost. Another example, labor. It is very well known that some regions like Asia, especially India and China, have lower costs of manufacturing. In Europe and US, labor might be up to 15% of operating cost, where Asian manufacturers may only be spending 5 to 10%. Now let's look at logistics. Sometimes the cost of getting OCTG to the right place costs half as much as the pipes themselves. I think we should not ignore such an important parameter. This goes a long way in getting to know a sourcing man as a sourcing manager what is the final cost you pay. And last but not the least is utilization. The current oversupply in the market is driving the prices of OCTG down. But the uh, raw material prices are going up. To, to talk about this disconnect, utilization plays a vital role as it connects demand and supply. It is a very good indicator of what is the weightage manufacturing side parameters have when it, compared to the marketplace. As, and, and in the end, it is also a very good indicator for the negotiating table. All in all, these factors are very good to let a sourcing manager know if he is getting a fair deal. And a forecast including all these parameters gives a very good picture of the next deal you might be making and actually helps with that. A one look reference on whether this next order I am placing is the best offer I can get. So tell me Mahesh, are we doing well so far? Absolutely Shreyanshu, but what about the demand side parameters? Of course Mahesh, that is something we can show not ignore. So let's look at some of the major drivers in demand. Crude oil pricing has always been a driving force for the growth of ENP activity as companies would leverage by e increasing their ENP spend and thereby achieving a higher ROI from every barrel of oil and gas they produce. Also, increase in ENP spend would mean increase in drilling activity, which is evident from the global recount which is expected to touch 3500 rigs by, 20, by the end of 2014. All of this directly affect the demand and subsequently the price you pay for OCTG. This is clearly visible as the price of OCTG is weak due to the oversupply in the market despite an increase in the raw materials as we said before. All this aside, are you aware that there are some significant factors which are sometimes undermined? Horizontal drilling has almost doubled in the last four years owing to the increased spend in unconventional resources like shale gas, tight gas and gas hydrates. What does this mean for a forecast? When weighed and indexed, we see some trends which, sh which show that while the demand of OCTG is rising, the excess supply does not let the factors dominate. Horizontal drilling is the most significant driver for price, but it is not a strong enough factor. Such insights that come in from the factors that are considered allow for the model to be more accurate and transparent. So Mahesh, what do you think? Will this new idea be of any use to our listeners? I can see where we are going with this. The approach considers all the significant supply related factors and also accounts the forces of demand that affects the price. But what is the final output? That's a very good question Mahesh and it brings us to the comparisons. To test the accuracy of our idea, we first needed a base to test against. So we indexed the actual price values over a year and used this as our baseline. For the same period, we calculated the price index using just three raw materials and then using the more detailed index based model and the results speak for themselves. 
the accuracy we saw from the raw material index was close to the actual values as was the index based model. The former gave a maximum accuracy of around 94% and the latter 95. Our conclusion? The model is accurate and gives a desired output. But Shreyanshu, from what I can see, the accuracy seems to be marginal. Well, the distinguishing feature here is flexibility though. When we did the same set of operations for the slightly tweaked factors for high chromium alloy tubing, we created the actual price index and compared it with the raw material and the index based results. The results are very clear when compared side by side. The raw material index deviates from the actual values by 20% but the accuracy for the index based model stays above 95% throughout this scenario. The consistency and accuracy of this approach is notable as even though variables such as raw material compositions and percentage change based on type of pipe, the accuracy did not change. We can expect similar consistency when tweaking factors to provide a regional flavor. All in all, this model shows consistent and accurate results for any specific need a category manager might have. Well Mahesh, what do you think? Of course, Shreyanshu. I can see the advantages of this model for, from a category manager's perspective. So let me sum up some advantages of this model which a category manager would desire to have at the end of the road. I see you have improved the accuracy of the model by taking into account both demand as well as supply side parameters. I really like the fact that your model is customizable to any grade of OCTG. API and premium. This should really help the category manager in buying right kind of product at right price. With this model, I can tweak the factors to reflect regional outlook. With all the hidden, hidden costs like labor, energy, logistics and utilization rate, now I am able to know whether I am paying a fair price to my supplier. All in all, the index based model provides with a very systematic approach and gives a very holistic view of the commodity market. This will definitely help the category managers around the world in taking a well informed decision in the long run. Thank you Mahesh and Sreyanshu for sharing your insights on this topic. I can see we have a few questions that were raised during the presentation. Given our time constraints, we will be answering the most frequently asked ones. The first one, since this is a forecast model that you say is accurate up to one year, how accurate do you expect it to be over a longer duration? Thank you for the question. Uh, uh, we have basically taken a, year, a year's historical pricing as a sample space to test our model. And going forward, we tested it for one and a half years. Over one and a half years, we think that the model, uh, we, we've seen that the model is actually as accurate as it was for one year at 95%. The accuracy, of course, can be improved by accounting for lead and lag factors in this raw material as well as labor price changes. So that's something to look forward to, I suppose. Thank you, Sayanshu. The second question, what are the various elements that you consider when you include logistics in your model? Well, uh, that is, just give me a second, think on that. Um, yeah, logistics, when we're talking about logistics, we're uh, we looking at, uh, in this case, since this was a general model, we took the dry Baltics, uh, dry Baltic goods in index and in, the, in case we are making this model for a more customized purpose, say to forecast what would be the price six months down the line when we are taking goods from a single uh, from from a port to port, then such calculations can be added on the fly. As we said, this model is quite flexible.
Thank you, Sri Hanshu. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your participation on this webinar.